so glad you're here. I gotta tell you, my brother Omar, he's ready to preach the word of God today. He will be sharing the gospel of what it means to have Jesus in your life. And that's why he sang the song, There Is None Like You. And, and you kind of think about it. Just think about it. Have you ever met someone in your life that you thought, man, this person is so special. This, this person is like no other person I ever met before. And, you know, it could be a certain quality about this person that just, just makes you realize this person stands above all the rest. And, you know, the thing is, right, you can think about this person all the time and you go, wow, I wish I had more friends like this or, you know, more people like this in my life. Well, let me tell you, Jesus is the very one that you want to know, not just as your friend, but as your God. Because guess what? He will never let you down, amen? amen? The Word of God tells us He never fails us. And that's why when you sing a song like this, there is none like Him. Yeah, that's the honest truth. Nothing can compare to our Lord Jesus Christ. When you know Him personally, when you know Him as your friend, as your brother, as your God, He's your all in all. And guess what? You're not going to need anything else but just God and God alone. And isn't that sweet to know? Isn't that awesome to know? If you have God, you don't need anyone else. You don't need, you know, anything else. But just having God in your life, He know, you know that He'll provide for your every need. You know that He will never let you down. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Why don't we go ahead, let's stretch a hand towards our brother Omar. Brother Omar, if you can... Come over here, and uh, we'll stretch a hand towards you, and let's pray. Let the Holy Spirit just fill you right now, brother. As we know, um, you've been called to preach the Word of God. We know uh, He will fill you up, and you will speak through His words. And we know you will speak life into us as the very life comes from our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father God, we just lift up our brother Omar to you, and we pray in the name of Yeshua, in the name of Jesus, as he speaks forth your word. I pray, Lord, that you will give him the words to say, that it's not his words, it's your word that will be spoken. It's your presence that is here right now that we embrace. And as we do that, I pray your words will fill us. Your words will come alive and speak to us in such ways that we're not going to leave here the same person. But in reality, we know we're becoming more like Jesus Christ as your word completely fills us and gives us all we need to live a life of victory. So, Lord God, we place this time fully into your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray all these things, and we all say together, Amen. Amen. Praise God. It's been a long time. Four years ago, I actually preached this here, before the COVID days. And this is a beautiful message. You know, good afternoon. Aloha, my brothers in Christ here. Aloha. It's, I'm really excited to do this. You know, I'm going to share to you the seven I am's saying and statement of Jesus Christ. There are seven of them, you know. I'm going to show it to you later. I'm going to talk about it specifically, but I only need one. You see this? Subway, John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through Jesus Christ. So that's the one of the I am's. Uh, Jesus says I am's. I'm going to read to you the seven I am's first before anything else, okay? Here's the seven I am's. I, wasn't, I wanted a uh, PowerPoint, but this is it. I'm going to just read one by one. First one, it says here. It's all in the book of John. If you open your Bible, the seven I am's given by Jesus Christ as a great I am is all on John. John 6, 35, the first one. I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never be hungry. Are you aware of that? That God provides no matter what? He feeds us not only by food, but if possible, if the word of God is better. The second one, I am the light of the world. That is John 8, 12. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. My goodness. Once I was lost, now I am found. Amazing great song. If you walk with God, you have the light to shine out. Shine, Jesus, shine. Yeah, you got to show your light in the, the world of darkness. The, this world is falling right now, believe you me. And we need Jesus Christ. That's the second I am. That's his deity and his, uh, you know, uh, character as Jesus. The third one. Oh, hold. Oh. 
Don't go away. The fourth one, I am, uh, this is John 10.10, 10. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Are you, are you guys willing to lay down your life for Jesus? I think I am. I'm going to die for him. For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Amen. That's the fourth uh, great I am of Jesus. The fifth one, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. Do you know what this, what this is? This is the eternal life that God promises us. Yeah, if you accept the Lord as your Savior, if you know from your heart to heart that God was de dead and was raised three days after, you are saved and you, God's going to promise you eternal life. This is, I am the resurrection, the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And uh, I'll skip the sixth one. The seventh one, the last one. I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. Do you know who this is? Jesus the vine. His father is the gardener and we are the branches. Amen. That's John 15, 1. And this one I'm going to share to you is the sixth one. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And that's John 14, 6. Let's move on. Okay, that's that. Okay. There was a scenario in the upper room. This is in the book of Acts. If you read the Bible, there was a scenario there one time that Jesus was telling his disciples. Yeah. He said there that... He was uh, speaking about leaving, about his departure, which led to the question of his disciples. Yeah. Now, we, they don't understand. Uh, the disciples have been following Jesus for three years in the ministry, right? And then one day, he just tells them, I'm going to go away. So they put the trust and hope in him as the promised deliverer and Messiah, yet they didn't, didn't understand he was, how he was going to ac accomplish the deliverance, right? So let's see here. Okay. Let's pray first. I haven't prayed. <laughs> Sorry. Heavenly, let's bow our heads down. Okay? Heavenly Father, we just come before you, Lord, with open hearts and mind, Father God. Help us to understand and believe, Lord, that there is only one way to your kingdom, Father God. Help us know the truth in your word, Father God, that as we receive your word today, may it not be just information, but it's transformation for me and for everyone here that hears the word, Father God that we can be in your likeness. Help me and bless me, Lord, as I share this message, as you are the only way, the truth, and the life, and that no one comes to the Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Now, my take the notes. Let's take a look at the, my notes now. And it says here, Who does Jesus say who he is? Good question, yeah? You know, that's the great seven I am's I just gave you. And that's him, the seven I am's. But now we'll just boil down into one specific I am, the number six again. And who is our Lord? I can ask you guys. Who is our God? What is God like, do you think? Is that a good question? You know, let us look at Jesus. If you look at Jesus, how does he look? Oh, he is God. Right? He is the Son of God. He, he is, Jesus is God himself manifest in flesh. You can see God, but God sent his only begotten Son. That's Jesus, right? Now, Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. He was born as spirit on Virgin Mary. Remember that? No contact. The Spirit of God gave us Jesus Christ. He's the Spirit. He never been Joseph and uh, Mary, the husband and wife, never even, <laughs> you know what I mean. It's the Spirit of God that gave us Jesus Christ. Amen. And on uh, the first born, or I said, the first born of all creation, on seven occasions, Jesus said, I am. Jesus even said that uh, it's, it's the seven I ams, which is the, his divine character and his deity. You know, it's impact, you know. The, and the six I am that we're talking about, look, yeah, again, this is the way, the truth, and the life. And we, we're, I'm, I'm going to go back to the scenario in the upper room. You know, in the upper room, he was telling about his death, right? And resurrection and ascension to heaven. The wind is blowing. Now, you can imagine how scared they are. They've been with him, yeah? 
and he's gonna go away. What do you think when your father go away, when you're a child? Do you think you'll be fine? I don't think so. So they were so scared. And you know what? Jesus comforted them. It's in your um, book now, in your notes. Let's read together John 14, 1 to 6. Okay? Jesus answered. This he comforted them. Uh, uh, but this... Uh, what's that? Oh, I'm loading the notes. Okay. Do not let your heart be troubled. He said, you believe in God. If you believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were so, would I have told that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and I prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going? Then, but, you know, Thomas said to him, this is very, very, you know, like the question is really, uh, what Lord? Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? And you know what? And Jesus answered, John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Amen. That is a very bold statement. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. There are multiple ways to God, the Father, but there's only one way to. There's, there are not multiple ways to God, the Father. It's only one. One way to Jesus. Amen. Remember the song we said, one way, Jesus, you're the only one that I could live for. One way, Jesus, you are the, you know, uh, you are the way, the truth, and the life. No one, we live by faith and not by sight. How do we know who our Lord Jesus is? Another question for you guys. How guys do you know? Which way do we go? I'm going to take the sixth statement, the, the uh, John 14, 6, piece by piece. And the first bullet I'm going to tell you is, he sets our path. I am the way. He sets our path, okay? You know, when we, what does Jesus mean when he say that? The way to what? We know that the only way to his Father is through him, amen? And Jesus was declaring he was not one of the many ways, but the one and only way. No shortcut, my friends. No sidelines. It's not an overnight <laughs> walk with God, you know. It's a daily process, believe you me. It's an ongoing journey. You've got to do your devotion. You've got to read the Bible, study it, and apply it in your life. And if you don't know anything about reading the Bible, we have Bibles here. Pastor Ben, we have... Soon or later, we have, we're going to have our Wednesday Bible study with you guys here. You know, what is WWJD? Can somebody uh, mention what's WWJD? Walk with Jesus daily, right? I have two acronyms for that. You got to walk with Jesus daily, not what would Jesus do. That would be what would Jesus do. But you have to walk with Jesus daily and you have to worship with Jesus daily. Amen. Let's take a look at King Solomon, what he says. This is the first here in, the, in your notes, yeah? In your notes it says, There is a way that seems right to a man, but only ends in death. That's Proverbs 14, 12. The King Solomon wrote that he's the wisest uh, man in the Bible, in the Old Testament. Here he's specifically take, uh, talking about physical death, you know, not about the spiritual or eternal life. And here, it's like a man doing in his own ways. <laughs> not God's way, and he ends up in physical death, not spiritual death. Amen? So that's what it means. But I'm going to tell you later on what happens to a certain person about this Proverbs 14, 12. Let's move on. Here, Father, uh, Father uh, King David says, the word is a lamp. It's in your note. That's what we sung. This, the word is a lamp unto our feet, my feet, and a light unto my feet. That's a pathway that we can move. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways. He will direct your... Yeah. So he's the pathway to freedom, to truth and everything and promises of God. So we also worship the word. We sang the Y word. is the lamp and to my feet. There is no other way to our Father God but through Jesus Christ. And there should be no other small gods, you guys, small gods, to follow in our life. It means that anything outside of Christ himself, anything outside of the great I am, anything outside of the person of Jesus is either not on the way 
it's n either leading in the wrong or it's not the truth. It's false. It's deception, right? At the end, it's not life. It's going to be death, physical death. Amen? We cannot serve other gods. Believe me, on your notes, let's take a look at it. The first of the Ten Commandments says that, Deuteronomy 5, 7, You shall have no other gods before me. Amen? That's the first one that was written in the Ten Commandments when Moses was given the, the Ten Commandments in the Mount Sinai. Let's take a look at what Luke says about having two masters. We sing, <laughs> there is no one like you. Yeah? Luke 16, 16, 13 says, No servant can serve two masters, for either he hate the one and love the other, or else he will despise the other. You cannot serve God and Mammon, Mola, like this money. Right. Yep. These other gods, small gods, maybe Mola, I said, Maybe your work, maybe your possessions, maybe your authority, you got power. And for some people, greed from more and more mabon or mola. Serving two gods or more doesn't lead us guys to salvation. Let us see what Paul says about it. Acts 4.12, it's in your note. You got it in your notes? Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Just like Romans 10, 23. Call on the name of the Lord and you will be saved. Yeah? So, how about King David? Again, he says, Psalm 86, 8. Look at this. Among the gods there, there is none like you. That's what we sang earlier. There is none like you. How about First Chronicles 7.20? It says here, Oh Lord, there is none like you, nor is there any God besides you. Oh. And finally, you remember, guys, there's only one God to be worshipped, and that's our Lord, the God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Trinity in one, three persons one. Here, finally, Isaiah 46, 9. For I am God, and there is no other. I am God. There is none like me. Is that an amen? Jesus is the only way, guys. The way, again, is a path or a road to be followed. A way is not a set of beliefs or religion. Church is body of Christ, not building. It is a supernatural relationship with God when you confess your mouth that the Lord Jesus Christ is your Savior. Is that an amen? amen. Okay, last one here. Let's take a look at what Paul says again. Here this is, uh, what verse is uh, Romans 10.9. This is when, when you confess that if you confess your tomorrow, the Lord and Jesus and believe in your heart of heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. We follow him when we confess that he is Lord. And, and as his followers, guys, we can be comforted knowing he will never let us astray. Do you believe in that? As long as you are in line with the word of God every day of your life, every minute that you can think about, pray to God, you will be fine. Because Romans 10, 13, I put it in here. Whoever calls in the name of the Lord shall be saved. That way, once you accept that, guys, Jesus, uh, Jesus Christ in your heart, is that path of dying to an old way of being. And being born into a new way of being, this way is the only way to God. Amen? Second Corinthians 5.17. You know this? You are a new creation. You got to let go of the past and your old way. Jesus is the only way, and that way of dying to an old way of being. And being born again a new way of being is known in an other world religions of the world. The way of Jesus is universal even to the millions of people who have never heard of him. Amen? The way of Jesus is the only way of death and resurrection. The path of transition and transformation from being an old way of being. So if you want to find the way, please seek him daily and you will find the truth. And that leads us to the next bullet. Number two. I am the truth, John 14. He checks our purity. How pure are you with Jesus? Are you authentic or are you just, oh, I know Jesus, but I don't follow, I don't, you know. There are those who are like that, but my prayer is for you guys to really constantly keep on uh, getting in line with the word. If you have Bible, I mean, you don't have Bible, we have Bibles here. 
we could give you Bibles. Purity. There's another scenario in the book of Acts I'm going to talk about. It's about lying to the Spirit. Look at this. It's not in your uh, notes, but I'm going to read to you. Yeah. <laughs> The, the, the verse here says, how, uh, let me read the verse here in uh, uh, 2, purity. Um, where is that? Just, uh, okay. It says, sir, how is it that you have contrived this deed in your heart? You did not lie to us, but you lied to God. What, uh, that's the N N A S B version. I'm going to read the New King James. Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to man, but to God. This is lying about the Holy Spirit, okay? In the book of Acts, there's a story about, I don't know if you read it, guys. This is Ananias and Sapphira, their husband and wife. In the olden days, uh, Paul uh, got, want to gather the, you know, the disciples and all the believers. Yeah, oh, Let's work together so we can you know, share our properties, jewelries, houses, whatever, you know, sell it so we can help each other, you know, ministry together. So in the book of Acts, chapter 5, 1 to 4, I'm going to read it to you. A certain man named Ananias and Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession. They sold their property, right? And he kept back part of the proceeds, his wife also being aware of it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. So meaning to say, they did not give it all. They hide 50-50, I'll just give 50 and I'll keep the 50. Okay, then let's own that three. But P Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled you, <laughs> your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and kept back part of the price of the land for yourself? So while it remained, was it not your own? Peter said, and then af and after it was sold, was it not your own control? You should have given everything. Peter said, why did you guys keep it? Why have you considered this thing in your heart? You have not lied to man but God. It is the issue of the heart here, you know. You know what? This is also happening in us. You know that that's one of our struggles in life. We have to give our heart to Jesus fully. Let us embrace the truth in Jesus. Let him be the center of our life. You know we cannot hide from God. You can write, but you cannot hide. God knows your heart. God knows the numbers of your hairs, you know. Yeah, he owns everything. He knows us intimately. Yeah, He is in control for life. Amen? He is the truth. We cannot and must not lie with the Holy Spirit. You know what happened? I told you, Proverbs 14, 12, the first bullet that I put in there happened to Ananias and Sapphira. There's a way that seems right to man, but only ends in death. It happened to both of them. They both maki. They died. Yeah? And there was a great fear in the church. You know what happened? I can read it in the Bible, but they, they, they died. The husband first died, and then after three days, Sapphira came in. Oh, what happened? Uh, the, uh, they were about to bury the husband, uh, but uh, uh, Peter said, you know, you're next. She died too. So that was a great fear in the church. Amen. So guys, don't lie in the spirit. God knows your heart. Be pure with, uh, with God. Amen. Let's take a look at what Sol King Solomon says in the chapter of Ecclesiastes. I like this. My favorite book in the Bible is always uh, Proverbs. Uh, Solomon wrote that. Look at this. Solomon writes about the vanity of vanities. Mostly everything we do in life is chasing and grasping on the wind. But at the last chapter, this is the last, last chapter of Ecclesiastes, if you read the Bible. Look at this. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. For God will bring every work into judgment, including secret thing, whether good or evil. When you die, when we die, we go up in heaven, we are judged. What have you done? So you cannot hide, you cannot lie to the Spirit. Jesus says, I am the truth. Yeah? That is, uh, he is the truth, not a truth or having truth. And we know he was full of grace. God is full of grace and truth, 1 John 1, 14. Jesus is the truth means it's truthful in everything he says. Amen? Jesus himself is the only truth. No blemish, no sin. Any ideas or concepts of philosophies that go against Jesus' teachings of the word of God are not truth. Believe you me. You cannot lie. You cannot add on the words in the Bible. You cannot take away the words in the Bible. The Bible is 
what it is. It's infallible. You cannot touch that. Some other churches, uh, you know, change it. I'm, I'm sad about that. And here, look at what King Solomon again says. Your law is the truth. Some, it's in your notes. Psalm 119, 142. Many people seem to be searching for truth, right? Ah, I got to go hiatus. I got to go Sabbath. I got to go find myself who I am with Christ. I hope it's with Christ when they go out. Yeah, they, and they'll go to great lengths and ways to find out. They go out in the open and find their soul. Jesus is the only truth, amen, they're looking for. They're missing the mark. If they look for other truth, only in him do we find true life. Amen? Amen. 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 Okay, let's move on. And take a look at the book of John again. Oh, I like that. John 8, 32. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Is that an amen? Jesus was talking about himself in this statement. When we come to know him and believe in him, in his truth, we will find freedom. And by abiding in the word of God and being a follower and disciple, Jesus Christ sets us free. Amen. We can prove that Jesus is the truth by reading the Bible, again, applying his teachings in our life, and let us be smart about how we think about this. We need to know Christ. It's an ongoing, again, journey. And walk with him in spirit and truth. Uh, I, I like this guy, C.S.W., uh, C.S. Lewis, a British, Irish Christian apologist, writer. And he made a very, very good statement and argument about, about defending that Jesus is the truth. Yeah, he said that Jesus can be one of three things. One, he is either a liar. Two, he is either a lunatic. And the third one, he is the Lord. Let's continue. It doesn't make sense when he's a liar because everything about himself they said would happen, and it did. He died after three days. He rose from the dead. Is that a lie? No, it's not a lie. He was betrayed, and he did die and came back to life. He was able to tell things about people that no one else knew. Jesus then is no liar. Amen? Amen. And then, then, then he is, is he a luna lunatic? <laughs> He, our Lord, Jesus Christ, some crazy person? I don't think so. Me, I'm crazy for Christ, but Christ is not crazy. Yeah, we are crazy sometimes. People say, oh, you, you talk, talk, talk much about God, God, God. So what? I love God. God is good all the time. God is good. All the time, yeah. Crazy people don't sound as reasonable as Jesus. <laughs> they are crazy. But, uh, you know, uh, Jesus is no liar, then he is not a lunatic. Lunatic, whatever he called. Yeah. The stories Jesus told and the actions he lived by are things that crazy people do. Yeah. So that leaves us one good option, right? Jesus is he who he sees he is. That's my title. Who does Jesus say who he is? He said the great I am. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. Uh, the prophet John puts it this way. As we know that Son of God has come and has given, it's a new note, I think, yeah? Oh, yeah. First John 5.20. Let's read this together. Yeah. As we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know who is true God. And now we live in fellowship with the true God because we live in fellowship with His Son, Jesus Christ. He is the only true God and He is eternal life. Amen. Whew. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. And that brings us to our last bullet, the third nugget that... Uh, I am the life, John 14, 6. And I put it in here. He determines our passion. You know what passion is, what you do, what you like, yeah? And here, the very first uh, bull, uh, scripture that I put in here, my passion, Paul's passion is for, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Do you want that, guys, in your life? that you will live for Christ right now and when you die, when you, because if you know Jesus Christ, you know where you're going. <laughs> you're going to have eternal life up in heaven with him. Amen? And you know this, uh, this verse, my mom in the Philippines, when she died, she requested that to be put in her epitaph. This is the one written in her epitaph there. For to me to live is Christ, Philippians 1.29. This is Paul's passion, guys, and I hope each one of us would have the same passion, to live for Christ. And someday we, we die, we go up in heaven. Amen? Amen? 
Our passion is also to live by the Spirit. It will convict us to do the right thing and live life in the line, in line with the Word. How about this celebrated the book of uh, John? This is the bottom line now. Oh. Uh, let me read first Galatians 5.16 before we do to the bottom lines. Can we read this together? Ready? Go. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to prevent you from doing what you want. Please, guys, have the passion to live for Christ all the way. I have decided to follow Jesus. We have decided, I should say, to follow Jesus. We have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Amen? Amen. And then the bottom line verse. This is the most celebrated verse. I hope you guys know this by heart. Because when I was young, this is my most celebrated <laughs> verse. For God so loved the world is, uh, that he gave his only begotten son, that the whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have what? Eternal life? Everlasting life, right? And uh, the conclusion here is Je Jesus says he is life, meaning he's the resurrection, the life. We can read about, how about Lazarus? What happened to Lazarus? If you read John 11, 43 to 44, wh what happened is true, you know. He was raised from the dead. Jesus was the only way to life for Lazarus, and that's the truth, because there is no other way than, than through Jesus to receive eternal life. Nobody. That's why there's no, <laughs> there's none like you, yeah? Okay? And then John says, he gave the promise, uh, the last verse, because I live, you also will live. The deliverance he, wa he was about to provide was a true deliverance from a life of bondage, my friends, to sin and death, to life of freedom in eternity. Jesus had told us, this, had told his disciples about uh, his death now he was claiming to be the source of all life yeah when you put your trust in him you're gonna you have the promise of the holy spirit and the promise of eternal life he revealed his authority granted which was granted by his father so let me close this up then uh this is so beautiful thank you lord for this word that i shared to them in this word jesus was declaring himself the great i am right the seven great I am, the only path to heaven, the only true measure of righteousness and the source of physical and our spiritual life. He was t t taking this claim as the very God of creation and the Holy One who inhabits eternity. He did this to his disciples so they would be able to face the dark days ahead, you know, and carry on the mission of the disciples to declare the gospel to the world. And here we are. We're declaring it. We're part of this uh, ministry now. Jesus has started it, passed it on to his disciples, and we are doing it now. Once they understood the truth of the word of his words, the disciples, they became changed people, and the world has never been the same. Amen? Right. It's never been the same. There's so many churches out there. We are a New Testament church, meaning to say we, we, we do a lot of all the New Testament. The Old Testament is you cannot, uh, you, know, you cannot take that away. You can, that's your reference to all, but we all churches throughout the world now it, uh, are based on the New Testament teachings. They heard his words and obeyed them, the disciples. They followed his example and command others the truth about sin, about righteousness, and judgment. When we follow him in the way, we can be assured of following him all the way to heaven. Amen? In closing, we learn from this. I am. Statement from Jesus Christ is everything we need. He is the way. He is the only truth. And he is eternal life. When life, guys, is scary, when we, conf when we are confused and worried, we all got problems in life, you know, right? You guys, we're not perfect. We still stumble. The, the, the crafty devil is on our back sometimes. Whatever it is going in your life, this I am statement brings us comfort. Amen? Amen? Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the light. He is the certainty and comfort we need right now, brothers and sisters. We need it in this uncertain world, fallen world right now. One way to Jesus? One way. Yep. Yeah, Jesus. Who does Jesus say who he is? 
He is the great I am, the seven I am. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through Jesus Christ. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus, for this time, for this message. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Let's thank our brother Omar for presenting the word of God. You know, I got to tell you, as we realize who Jesus is in our lives, you know, I got to tell you, even as a young Christian, not until I realized how much Jesus really loved me. I remember I still kind of wanted to do my own thing. You know, I kind of thought, well, yeah, I'm a Christian, but hey, don't I have the freedoms to do what I want to do? You know, because I'm a free man, ain't I? But, you know, I realized the more you get to know Jesus, man, there's no other way but Jesus' way. He tells us how to live according to his word. And you must choose whether or not you're going to do it. You cannot say, okay, maybe I'll just go halfway in. You know, no, 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 no. That, that doesn't work. Because if you go halfway in sooner than you think, you're going to be all in back into the world. Because the devil's going to help you get back there. And you got to realize God wants all of you. He wants all of your heart. You know, I, I got to tell you, you know, several days ago, you may have heard about that mini sub the Titan, you guys heard about that? It, it, it was on the bottom of the ocean, it got lost, and I heard it imploded. And there were five people in that little sub. And you kind of go, wow. You know, I remember when I first heard it, I, I, I was praying. I said, Lord, oh, please save them. And you know, because you can you imagine five people in that little sub, and it's called the Titan. And they're there to explore the remnants of the Titanic, okay? and the thing is right you, you kind of wonder why would they even go in the first place but i remember you know a whole bunch of my other brothers and sisters we were praying for them and we we're saying lord please uh, help them through this that they'll be found and all that and but now we discovered they, they all died okay and you, your heart kind of sinks you know when you hear about that because, you know, you realize, man, first of all, the ages ranged from 19 to 77. And actually, there was a father and son that was on board. And you go, wow, you know, and, and the thing is, your heart kind of sinks because the first thing that comes to your mind, if you're a believer, you're a Christian, what's the first thing you think? I wonder if they're saved. Because, yeah, if they don't know Jesus, man, Really, that's what the scripture tells us. You don't know Jesus, you're not going to receive eternal life. That's the truth, okay? The, the Bible tells us in Hebrews 9.27, for a man is destined to die once, only once, and then comes judgment. So while you are here on this earth, you only got one chance to make it right with God. You only got one chance to say, Lord, I blew it. But I repent of my sins and I turn my life over to you. That is what God is waiting from all of us. And if you haven't done that yet, I'm going to tell you, we are not guaranteed another tomorrow. The fact of the matter is, you got to know Jesus right now. You have to know with great certainty that He is your Lord and Savior, that He is your God, and there is no other God but Him and Him alone. Amen? And that is something that is so important to know that you must receive him now. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow, because sometimes you say, oh, I'm going to wait. Maybe, maybe tomorrow, maybe next week, maybe next month, maybe next year. Well, there's no guarantee. But what can be guaranteed? If you know Jesus now, God promises he will welcome you into eternity. When that day comes, when you will take your last and final breath. And you know what? We pray for, for the families of the ones who had passed away in that little tiny sub. I got to tell you, by the way, did you know how much it costs just for one person to be in that sub? $250,000. You want to go take a ride in that little sub? Really, you're taking a chance with your life. Yeah, they probably paid all this money thinking, hey, we're going to be safe. We, we paid a lot for this. They guarantee our safety. Well, there's no guarantee for that. One thing God can guarantee you is eternal life. But you must know him. 
You must embrace his son, Jesus Christ, and say, Jesus is my Lord. He's my all in all. He's my everything. And if you really know that in your heart, yeah, God says, I promise you. I promise you. When you take your last and final breath, you will be in my presence. You will be in my arms of love. Because if you don't know Jesus, the Bible says you will be eternally separated from him forever. You will never know what it means to have the love of God in your life. Never. So, brothers and sisters, if you don't know Jesus today, ask him into your heart. I'm going to be leading you in a prayer in just a few minutes, but it's a decision you got to take seriously. Are you going to say yes to Jesus with all of your heart? And not just say the prayer and go, okay, now I'm saved because I said the prayer. No, you say the prayer and you say, Lord, I'm all yours. I'm living for you from this day forward. Amen? And if you do that, God says, you're my child. I receive you. You're welcomed into my family forever. Amen? So why don't we go ahead? Let's, let's bow our heads. Let's bow our hearts. Let's come before our Father in heaven. Father God, I just want to thank you, Lord, for all my brothers and sisters right here, right now, Lord. And now I'm, I'm just uh, speaking to you, brothers and, si brothers and sisters, as you've heard the word of God uh, preached by a brother, Omar. If you know in your heart that you say you've been a Christian for some time, but you haven't truly lived a life that God has called you to live, the Lord wants to know does your heart really belong to him? And right now, if you're saying, you know, I realize I, I've been just going through the motions. I've been going to church. I, I've been saying the right things. I've been saying, praise the Lord. I've been, you know, making sure that I do some of the things that Christians do. Maybe I go and uh, help a person who is in need. But th that is the extent of it. I go to church every now and then. Well, God says, I want all of your heart. Now, with all our heads bowed, with our eyes closed, you may be saying, Pastor Ben, I've done living a life that is not true to God. I want my life to be in total surrender to the living God, to my Lord Jesus Christ. And with all our heads bowed, with our eyes closed, you're saying, yes, that's me, Pastor Ben. I want to know that my life is 100% in the hands of God. And if this is the cry of your heart, can you just raise your hand and say, that's me, so I can pray for you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise God. Anyone else saying, Jesus, I'm all yours. I'm all yours, praise God. Anyone else? All right, praise God. All right, you put your hands down. Let's pray. Father, you see now the hands that were raised right now. Father, you know who they are. And as they come with hearts, that are fully surrendered to you. As they have raised their hands in surrender to you, I pray, Father, will you just fill them up right now with your sweet, loving, holy presence right now in Jesus' name. Let them have an infilling that only can come from you. And Father, as they say from this day forward, they are living for you. I pray that they mean it with all of their hearts. And they will see the transformation that will come forth in their lives. It's not something that they will do on their own. Father God, I know you will empower them to be more like your son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, I know that's what you do because your word tells us this. We are not alone. When we make this decision, you will help us. You will empower us to become exactly the person you want us to be. So Father, I thank you for what you have started in their lives and what you will continue to do. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray these things. And we say, amen, amen. Now, for some of you, you may be saying, you know, Pastor Ben, I've heard this invitation before, but like you said earlier, I always put it off. I say, oh, maybe next week, maybe next month, maybe next year, maybe five years from now, maybe 10 years from now. Well, like I said earlier, there's no guarantee. You know, God knows the number of your days. God wants to know, are you willing to give your life to him today? 
And if you feel a tug going on in your heart, that is real. That's the Holy Spirit. He's tugging at your heart because he wants you to come to know our Lord Jesus Christ. He wants, to, to, wants for you to know of the embrace that our Father God has for you. And right now you're saying, yes, I'm done fighting it. I'm done struggling with this. No, I want Jesus. I never accepted him before, but today I say yes to him with all of my heart. And if this is the cry of your heart right now, can you raise your hand and say, yes, Jesus, I receive you fully into my life. Hallelujah. Anyone else saying yes to Jesus? Yes to Jesus. Praise God. Anyone else saying, all of my life is yours, Lord. All of me unto you. Anyone else? Praise God. Praise God. All right, you can put your hands down. Hallelujah. Why don't you say this prayer? Let's pray it all together as a family. If you did, raise your hand, and this is the first time you're praying this prayer. Please pray it from deep within your heart and soul. And, and God knows how real you are about this prayer. Just repeat these very words. Say, Father God, I need you. I give you praise for who you are. I believe in you. I believe in your son, Jesus Christ, who died for me on the cross. But on the third day, he rose again, and he lives inside of my heart. I give you praise for that, Father God. And Father God, I confess that I'm a sinner. But your word says, if I confess of my sins, you are faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. <laughs> cleanse me now, Lord. Make me holy and pure unto you. So now I say this, Lord, so you can hear me, so that everyone can hear me, so that the devil will know that Jesus Christ is my Lord. I live for him. I live for him only. Now, Father God, I thank you for you have written my name. And I will spend eternity with you forever. I praise you for that, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. And everyone says... 